Welcome to another episode of In Conversation on Food Lovers TV. We are at Rivaz, the Indian fine dining restaurant at the Ritz Carlton. My guest today is a chef who travelled from India to UK in 1999 and over the last 15 years has three successful restaurants to his credit. The Cinnamon Club at the Westminster Library, uh, the Cinnamon Kitchen and more recently uh, Cinnamon Soho. One of London's most regarded and respected modern Indian chefs, Vivek Singh. Great to have you with us on Food great, Lovers TV. Great to be here, Kripal. Thank you. So let's let's go back a bit uh, to before London. So sure. you were with the Oberoi in India. That's right. Uh, yes. So you were with the Oberoi in Delhi, in Kolkata. Uh, Correct. In Mumbai a bit. Yeah. Mumbai a bit. Yeah. And then Jaipur. Right. So how did London happen? So I think London ha happened. It was just it's probably about time and being at the right place at the right time. I used to run Rajvilas, uh, mm -hmm. the Indian kitchen at the Rajvilas uh, at the time. And I'd been cooking with the Obroi for seven or eight years and it had been a fantastic journey. I always wanted to cook Indian food. Okay. And I'd uh, finally had the opportunity at Obroi Grand when I got to run Gharana for a couple of years. So I'd actually cooked Indian food for four or five years. And, and as much as I love to cook Indian food for the rest of my life, I realized that I was starting to get a little bit jaded okay. with the lack of innovation, with the lack of sort of experimentation or okay. bringing in new influences. So I was kind of itching for a new opportunity to, to kind of express the kind of cooking or Indian cuisine that I thought at the time just sat in my head <laughs> and I wanted to put it on a plate. And obviously it didn't exist in India. No, it didn't exist in India. I don't think it was the time for it in India either. And then uh, the Cinnamon Club opportunity presented itself and you know one thing led to another and there we are. Okay. It's not that you know Indian food wasn't popular, wasn't Indian restaurants weren't successful. Okay. I mean, even before we opened, there were about nine thousand Indian restaurants in the UK. 9, <laughs> you know, and and then the British romance of the Raj and the love of curry is is you know well documented. Anyways, it is the most popular cuisine, mm. be it supermarkets or restaurants or eating out, as as we say. However, it had a tag of sort of this cheap and cheerful tag. Flock wallpaper, sitar music, heavily carpeted, okay. um, dark, dingy places that you went out for a, you know, um, a curry after lots of beers on a Friday night, and I wanted to sort of change that perception. I wanted it to be seen as at par, if not better, than anything else. And then mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to put out a new kind of cuisine, one that I said you know earlier existed in my head. Yeah. Also trying to change people's perception of Indian food because very often they think, you know, why this change? We already love curry and we already love Indian food. We don't need to be taught how to eat it yes. in, a, in a fresh way. So um, it, was, it was that, but it, what it did and it, with its success, um, obviously set up, it paved the way for a, an absolute new breed of restaurants. So everything that we take for granted now, so you know, good qualities, ingredients being used, seasonal, fresh, um, seasonally changing menus, good design, um, service, and all of those things that we take for granted in the Indian restaurant scene in, in the UK um, was actually set out by Cinnamon Club in 2001. And there wasn't, I mean, there was a bit of innovative cooking going on even then. You know, there were a couple of very, very good restaurants, uh, Tamarind and Zaika at the time, who have, were sort of toying about with the idea of a bit of modern interpretations of traditional Indian dishes. This was for the first time that a 12,500 square feet, 250 seat restaurant was audacious and ambitious enough to serve three courses, everything plated and everything cooked from scratch when the order arrived. So, you know, there was a lot of emphasis on, on innovation, on creativity and seasonality. Okay. Yeah. So, you exactly. know, Cinnamon Kitchen, I did, um, it's, it's, uh, it's close to Liverpool Street Station. For those yeah. uh, familiar with London would know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the city of London. It's housed in the, um, what used to be the old spice warehouses of the East India Company. Right. And that was a huge draw for me. I thought, you know what, <laughs> what used to house India's best known export then, right. um, be it cotton, indigo, spices, tea, um, for it to house India's best known export now, the Indian restaurant, right. was a great, great fit. So okay. that was that. Um, it is a much more, um, much more relaxed, much more accessible, uh, a lot of high energy, good vibes, sort of theatre and interactive Indian experience. Okay. The club, as great as it was in terms of innovation and creativity for food, I think it lacked a little bit on its interaction and theatre okay. side, the energy, because it's, it's in the old Westminster Library, no, no matter how That's much right. you try, it's a bit of an institution. Right. Um, but as this uh, is very New York, very high energy, very beautiful space, hip, glossy, chic, but, okay. uh, but still has the same ethos of innovation and creativity is good quality ingredients. 
And then, you know, so I went mid market with that roughly 60 pound a head um, okay. compared to, let's say, 120 to 150 pound a head at Cinnamon Club. And the most recent restaurant um, I opened uh, in 2012 was uh, Cinnamon Soho. Yes. Um, the, the youngest, cheekiest, um, most fun kid, new kid on the block we have. Okay. We are extremely proud and passionate about it. Um, what it does, you know, if you think of um, Cinnamon Kitchen being a bit like loosening your tie um, after Cinnamon Club, um, Cinnamon Soho is about losing the tie altogether. Right. So, <laughs> so it's more of a lightning beam. The vibe. It's a really easy come, easy go place. You, you can, you know, nip in and out, have a couple of drinks and a few small plates and leave with change from 25 pounds, you know. Uh, it's fun, fearless, friendly, okay. you know. Uh, the, the, the mantra I use for that, uh, for Cinnamon Soho is, we call it Joho Soho. You know, whatever happens, happens. So anything, <laughs> everything, whatever. London is regarded as the world's capital for progressive Indian cuisine. And Arguably, you said that, Kripal, well, I didn't. Right. <laughs> uh, with, uh, with quite a few successful restaurants correct. run by some very prominent chefs and restaurateurs. Right. You have yeah. Kamilya Punjabi, you yeah. have Vinit Bhatia, you have Atul Kocha, Atul Kocha yeah. Sri Ram Ailur, okay. amongst others, and of course yourself right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so how does each restaurant carve out a niche for itself? Because all these restaurants, all these restaurateurs are doing uh, fairly well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Know, re reservation books are packed out weeks in Correct. advance. Correct. So how yeah. does each restaurant carve out a niche for itself? You see, I think, you know, it starts off from the point that there are a, enough people um, okay. and there's enough appetite. Um, so what I put the success of Indian restaurants down to in London is, uh, is largely down to the interest, the interaction and the appetite. Okay. And, you know, for, for a number of reasons, you know, uh, call it the romance of the Raj, you know, the Brits somehow. Um, I, I still believe they, they haven't entirely gotten out of the... Um, uh, the, they, they, they gotten over the love of curry or spice uh, post the days of the Raj um, and that connection somehow has just you know kind of stayed there there have been links throughout in the last sort of hundred odd years okay. uh, in some way shape or form that link is linked with spice is continued and I, I don't see that nation getting off spice uh, getting you know hooked off spice anytime soon to be honest with you but so firstly there are a number of people there's a lot of interaction and awareness and then I, what I find really amazing is that the, you, you mentioned a lot of you know, Indian restaurants and they're all kind of expressing themselves in slightly different ways and yes. their own voice and their own philosophy. Yes. And, um, and I think you know, what it is that is that individuality and that originality and that uh, opportunity to express themselves without necessarily being bogged down in, 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 you know, in the straight jacket of tradition, so to say. Okay. So you know, whilst good flavors and good taste is important, Authenticity may or may not be that high up the agenda, okay. and I think it does free up uh, the chefs and the okay. restaurateurs in their expression of what they're trying to do. Oh, yeah. And I think that that is really the reason why London has certainly in the last 15 years become a very, very prominent destination for global Indian food. Oh, yeah. It's truly the global capital of Indian food. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. dare I say, slightly controversially, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs>